guys, 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 welcome back to another week of Ball Hour Show. Um, so, guys, thank you very much for liking, subscribing, sharing. Obviously, we do have a couple more guests today. We have Max Mitchell, and of course, we've got Daryl Mitchell. Um, do you guys want to introduce yourself and just say a little bit about yourselves? Oh, that's put me on the spot now. That's you, mate. I mean, um, th they would be able to hear you if you could speak into the mic a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've, yeah, just um, lot played played non-league for for a very long time, mate, over twelve years now, and uh, took a management job last year. Gone back to playing this year, and yeah, just 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 cracking on with it, mate. Really. Yeah. yeah um, for the um, listeners, do you not want to say which one's Daryl, which one's Max? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Daryl, five years older, better looking. Uh, <laughs> he knows this, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Max's older brother. Um, yeah, played around the non-league circuit, every club in Hertfordshire. Felt like by the end of the career. But, uh, yeah, so went into coaching uh, a few years back. So I've coached at Hartford Town. Mm. Um, currently unemployed, not doing nothing, focusing on the wedding. So Mrs. is watching. <laughs> oh, when you get married? Uh, five weeks out in our beef. So. Oh, congrats, so, mate. Right, yeah, yeah, Flipping yeah, yeah. Well, well, congrats, mate. Cheers, all mate, all the best for that. You'll be itching to get back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, you are looking to get back into coaching, though. Oh, right? yeah, I love, I love football, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a football man through and through, so... It's one of them though, isn't it? you know, it takes over a lot of your time, sort of, even even in the coaching role. Mm. Probably, so I'd say, does. sometimes more, you know, you're on the phone all the time, so she wasn't getting annoyed, but I wasn't uh, wasn't dedicating enough time to the wedding. So yeah. It was a little conversation we had, so I stepped away for a while. What was the um, the main reason for stepping away from coaching? Um, I was I was with George at, at Hartford, so last, mm. last year, um, yeah, last year, sort of, we started the season. Uh, I stepped away uh, end of October, beginning of November. Yeah. Because um, it wasn't just a wedding, to be fair. I had a lot, a lot of work on, so I was, I was sort of working in an industry where I'm sort of one or two of the Saturdays in a month, I'm not there. So yeah, I wasn't I wasn't giving everything for the cause. At the time, we were struggling. So I felt like I was that coach telling, telling the boys they need to do more because we were struggling at the time. Mm. I wasn't then there Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yeah. To, to His dad's the boss, that though. He should be able to get out of that short. <laughs> <laughs> He's a career. Poor from you. I did not league, you know what it's like. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've come away from it end of October last year. So yeah, been out for quite a while now. Okay, um, but what made you decide to actually go into coaching? Were you playing before? Uh, yeah, so I just finished playing. Um, I think I was thirty-two. Probably should have played a little bit longer, but mm. uh, I had a bad, I had a bad injury, so I tore my meniscus in my knee, put on a little bit of weight, and it felt like a long way back at thirty-two. So um, I moved up to Hartford, and mm. uh, Gav Kelsey who just took the Hartford job. Yeah. Um, I, I was with him at St. Margaret's being the previous job. Uh, just got talking, he said, you know, he's, he's sort of looking to, we was in Spartan Premier at the time, so step five. Yeah. You know, he was he was hopeful to, to put a good team together and try and get promoted up in step four, um, trying to put a staff together. He, he had Phil, um, Ray, Eddie Mack with him already, but he, uh, he just said, do you want to come down and, and work within him? So yeah. Like, yeah, jumped at the chance to be fair. Really enjoyed it. Good, good two and a bit years I was there. Like, and, and you were part of like a, how many of you were there all together? Uh, like, oh, it's a running joke. Yeah, um, it was, <laughs> I think we had more of a coaching staff than a team at one point. Right? Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> no, yeah, we well, it depends how you look at it. We had Tom Barlow as a goalkeeping specific coach, mm. um, and then you had yeah, you had myself the first year. You had myself, Eddie Mack was head coach. Shout out to Eddie Mack, he's a top top coach yeah. as well, by the way. Um, top guy. Yeah, and then um, and you had myself, Phil Lovell. Um, Ray Greenall was was the assistant manager to, yeah. to Gav. So is it that big a team? I don't I know. Think, I think that level warrants it sometimes yeah. as well because you've got people that go away, people got holidays and stuff like that. So however you set your ship out, really, it depends, mm. doesn't it? But yeah, no, having six or seven, you always got someone away, and that comes that comes down to players as well. And yeah. yeah, management's the same things. They've got a life behind closed doors as well. That's what I mean. So but what made you go into um, coaching then? Um, it was more the management side that that sort of. That sort of tickled my fancy really it was mm. like I was playing for Terry Spillane for Averley with uh, my beloved Tony Faulkner <laughs> and um, it was I, ju I, ju I just started the, the thought process started thinking about ju how, how could I get on and, and uh, like manage a football club at maybe this level or the, or the level above mm -hmm. and um, it was just something that I, I, I wanted to do and just give it give it, give it, give it a good go really um, I kind of fell into it J John Barker was the manager down at St. Margaret's Bree um, and he offered me, I think Wadey went down to Cock Bosses, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, he offered me the number two role down at Mags. And uh, for, for, for personal reasons, John had to step away about 
sort of about ten games into the season. Mm. Uh, we didn't have the greatest start, um, but he's, he had. A, I think he had to have a back operation or something like that. So, yeah. so fair play to Johnny. He had to step down, and then they offered me the the, the, f- uh, the first team manager job down at St Mark's to be playing in the Essex Senior League. Um, and it was just an opportunity I thought I couldn't really turn down at the time. I was sort of in and out of work personally, so I could probably commit a little bit more at the time then. Um, and then, yeah, just just from from that day forward, we we we, we decided to build a build a decent enough team, a good management staff, and and I was able to do what I'd say is is well in a in a tough division to get out. Of, really. Yeah. Were you when the when the um, job came? Were you actually ready to like stop playing football? Though? It's it's a t- it's a tough one, really. Um, my ki- my my kind of my heart said no, but my head said yes a little bit. Mm. It was it was it was difficult. I mean, I had to make the decision whether to because it's a different kind of relationship when you're a manager of a football club, especially because I've been playing and a lot of the players in my circle that I could connect to a network with and, and bring in. They, mm. uh, I'd say four or five of them are probably quite good friends of mine. Yeah, the others are probably more more acquaintances, etc. But and, and football people that you just meet from day to day. Yeah, and through the years, but. So I had to separate myself from being a mate and being a manager. And I said to myself, before I went in to do that, I need to do that directly and let, the, let these boys know that. Mm. Um, which, which, which I think I did. And uh, <clears throat> it come across in the season and it, it, it worked out well in the end. Yeah. It worked out well in the end. Okay. Um, so how, where does the Hartford connection come into it then? Um, Wadey. Tommy Wade. <laughs> Tommy Wade, Wade, Wade. He, um, do you know what? It was, uh, I was at Mag's. We, we, we were paying out kind of expenses at the time. It wasn't, it wasn't really a budget there, I'd say, but we was able to lift them from for 16th to 6th in the league yeah. uh, in a cup final at the end of the league. I think there was about seven or eight games to go plus the cup final. Now, me and Tony put a project towards St. Mark's. We were quite ambitious people, that, you know what I mean? We, mm. we, we want to, whether club I'm at as a player or as a, as a manager, I want to do as well as I can, really. Um, so we, we kind of put something towards the committee down at St. Mark's, and not their fault, it just, it just wasn't, they wasn't able to, to one fund it or, 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 or two have the personnel to, to back it up. So <clears throat> it got towards the end of the season. I said, my, my targets before I went in, I said, I said to, the, to the group of players, to the staff, I want to finish in the top six and get into a cup final. And we kind of already, we'd, we'd done it. It'd been great to play in a cup final, don't get me wrong, and win a bit of silverware. But the opportunity came. Tommy rang me one day and just said, look, Max, I've got a meeting down at Hartford. Um, do you want to come in and just, just have a chat, really? Um, and one thing led to another. We we was <laughs> I went over there, had the chat, and it was just they'd already basically got someone in before before we'd even gone in there. Me and Tommy, mm. we were sort of unaware really. They'd got someone in before the person that was even in before us, mm. um, but which we wasn't we we wasn't to know. So we obviously set new plans, new targets to to. I think they've got one point from ten. So we set a realistic target at the teams that we were playing against. I think we had Chesney in there, we had Marlow, we had a few decent teams, Hanwell with the informed side at the time. I set a, a target of six to nine points within them seven games. And you've got, you got to realise, we weren't, we weren't really taking over a team that was doing great. Mm. So we had to sort of change up. And what I did, I took six or seven players over from St. Marksby to Hartford, strengthened it in that way, but still it was a big, it was a big ask bringing a, a step five team yeah. into a step four setup with a 48 hour turnaround to our first game against Marlow, we are second in the league. Yeah, were, were you with him as well? No, you'd nah, nah, I wasn't. I, 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 was with, uh, I started the season in Gab's uh, sort of management yeah. team. So obviously in between Gab's team and Max and Tommy going in, you had um, Adam Fisher mm. was in there for 10 games. It was a mad season. Like, like Georgie was there for, for the most of it. It was a crazy season. I think there's a lot of factors that year. Like a lot of people gossiping. I was, I was gonna, I was yeah, gonna get into that. that. Everyone, yeah, I was, I was, I was gonna get into that. Like, what exactly happened at Hartford? Uh, it's all opinions still because. What's your opinion? I mean, my opinion, my opinion is <laughs> we went into when we got promoted from Step Five, we went into the uh, Division One North. Yeah. Which for me is such a strong league, good league. Um, there was more teams in it the first season we were in there, and for me, a massive factor was the season after. They created the what I call the Yo Yo City League, the one they're in at the minute, the Southern Central, I think is it Southern. I don't even know the name. Oh, of that's all the travelling. Yeah, all the so travelling. leagues come in, you know, whatever the way they've restructured. I don't know the ins and outs, but it created another league with less teams. So mm. I think when we started the second season, so the beginning of last year, um, sort of, you know, the committee. I think Al Ward was chairman at the time. You sort of start budgeting for how the league was the previous year. So for for instance. We didn't have a Tuesday. We had one Tuesday game for eight weeks 
at the start of last season, which was a, a derby against Ware away. And you, you didn't have any Tuesday games. So, you know, clubs, you know, you, you're, not, you're getting nothing through the door. You're getting no gates in the week. Mm. Uh, you know, m- no money made behind the bar. So I think a lot of things were over over projected in terms of money. Yeah, you just lose a little bit of touch. You know, you lose a game on a Saturday, and then you got a long, long week until yeah, okay. until the following Saturday. Mm. And um, I just feel like uh, you know it was a slow start to the season. We didn't start that well. We had two very, very tough bars. Uh, not bars, sorry, uh, trophy and FA Cup games. We we had Corby away in the FA Cup. Mm. We finished in the playoffs of the of the Southern Prem. Uh, there's no Southern Division One. They were a very strong side. Beat us two 0 um, and then we had Didcot away. Did you not get a player sent off in that game? The Didcot one. Yeah, yeah did. we had a guy on loan from Hitchin, um, mm. and he he went in. Should we say recklessly after 15 minutes? Mm. We was we was dominating. Uh, got sent off. You know, you're up against it, and we still dominated with with 10 men. Mm. I still don't know. How we didn't take them to at least a replay. Lost the game two one. Yeah. Anyway. Me a river, but we went out of both them games, and you, you're budgeting for maybe slightly better runs in them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So and then there was there was sort of Alex Ward come away. Um, there's a new chairman went in. Uh, it's, it's a tough it's a tough place to be involved in over at Hartford. There again, again, not for throwing shade on too many people, but there's there's too many people involved. First of all, a lot of people with not an idea about football in the first place. Yeah. Um, when you're dealing with people like that, it's tough. Um, yeah, sort of looking at it from our own point of view as well as a staff. But as I say, when I was there, I don't know what Max might say differently. But you know, we we sort of changed the way we probably wanted to play from the season before. When we when we were in the run one north, we had a lot of you know very good footballers. We tried to to play a lot when it worked. We were mm. very very good. I think we were sitting nine points off in Division One North going yeah. into January of the playoffs, which you know for a team coming up from Step Five was was good. We we tailed away a little bit near the end of the season. You know, it got tough. And uh, I think we finished in thirteenth or fourteenth, but we was there to maybe build on the next year. And uh, yeah, I think we maybe just tried to we lost our identity a little bit. We started trying to play a different way, we tried to get the ball forward a little bit quicker, blah blah blah. But it, it just didn't work. When all that is happening, how much of a say? Because obviously, there's with so many coaches, mm-hmm. how much of a say or input do you get to actually have? Yeah, no, he's. Um, we, I'll say it's fair. Like um, we used to meet up. Like everyone, the team meets up at half one, don't they? We're always there, sort of half twelve, one o'clock before games. Mm. Um, Gav was always open ears, you know what we think we can do. Uh, yeah, I'd say you know, yes, yeah, as, as much as input, we you know, Gav would ask what we thought about things, and, and we give our sort of ideas and, and what we think where things are going wrong. I think after time, you know, if you're, if you're footballing people, you all sort of realise where. Well, you'd all have your, you know sort of similar ideas of where you think mm. things are going wrong, but uh, yeah, we was a good staff. We listened. Just didn't work out that second season. I don't think. I think we sort of just yeah, just didn't work out as much. So how come you didn't bring him in? Huh? How come you didn't bring him in? Don't want to work with him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the older, he's the older brother. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it can be hard sometimes, but do you know, it's, it's something that I'd, I'd definitely look at in the future, maybe. Mm. And I've, I've, I've sort of mentioned to I've mentioned it to him before, really, just about sort of coming in and give us an out maybe doing something similar to the Cowleys and what they've done and mm. you look at their story and how far they've got in, in their journey within football and it's it's admirable really so I mean in future there, there, there could be something there for me and Dal but at the minute I'm, I've, I've gone back to playing and it is what it is really and how's that going for you you're down at Tring right Tring Athletic yeah they're the sort of a club based out towards Hemel Hempstead way mm. um, I've played played against Tring over the years and I mean going down there they're, they're, it's, a, it's a really really nice football club uh, yeah. it seems to be run smartly uh, efficiently um, they've got a, a chairman in there that's ambitious um, and, and we're all kind of there for the same reason really um, and, it's, and it's been quite refreshing going back to playing because it, it's just a total different it's a different kettle of fish you know mm. what I mean the, the, the work that you need to put in as a manager and all the ins and out I mean Daryl just touched on, on what was what it was like down at Hartford and there was a massive internal fracture there yeah and it, did you feel that coming in as well do you know what? I, I, I didn't feel it because I didn't want to feel it. I had such a job in my hands, Daps, that I thought, you know what? I, I just need to focus on my group of players and my management staff yeah. and my thoughts and process and how I think I'm going to get out of this hole. So e- e- even when it comes to the money sides and the budget, was I looking for a budget for seven games to go? Probably not. Mm. There was something there. And I always said to the group from day one, I don't care what you're on. Like yeah. Someone might be on 90, someone might be on 30. It's going to get split across the group because this needs to be... For us to get out of this mess, it needs to be that joint effort. Yeah. Um, and, and and whether that was what well, it ended up being the right decision because we, we were able to stay up really. But I, I just wanted it to be fair and honest. And I think that's probably 
two of the things that 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 we didn't feel whilst we was there as a management group. Yeah. But we stayed true to ourselves, and that, that's what I was most proud of. Yeah. Not just for myself, my management staff, the group of players. We we the players that we got in that they bought into what we was trying to do. Mm. I mean, we already had our team identity, etc., from from St. Margaret's we kind of thing, and and it, and it worked. So I didn't really want to go away too far from that. And, and whatever we done over there, we done well. I mean, we I think we got seven games at seven points in seven games and. I mean, we took we took a point off Marlow away. We had a few away games there. We took a point at Mar uh, Marlow. Took a point at Hamwell, um, beat Egham, draw away at Chipston. So we had a few away games in there. We got we got trounced at um, at Chesham Craig Edwards side. So we took them to the wire to about seventy five minutes. But we played on the Saturday against yeah. Hamwell. Really hot conditions. We had a few out, and then we went to bank holiday Monday. on the bank holiday yeah. Monday. We went to 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 Chesham and maybe a bit of Craig's experience knew that we'd, we was going to be a bit leggy so um, did you enjoy your whole Hartford experience I, lo though? I loved it and pe people 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 say to me like whatever went on and they asked me questions about it and stuff like that. I, don't, I don't really care because it was such a good experience mm. and from doing it I was able to find out that I was as a manager and as the group I always say the group I always mention the group because the players back me as much as I back them mm. and uh, as a group we was we was able to, to to keep the club up which was the which was the goal from the outset and the whole process of managing from from the whole year, St. Mags and Fink, it, it's taught me so much as a as an individual. I mean, I'm still 29 years of age. I've got loads loads of time to manage. Mm. Everyone was getting into me about going back to play and going back to play and you're mad, you're mad. But it's something I wanted to do. And mm. now that I've gone back into playing and playing for Tring, it's just opened my world up a little bit more. That football life, do you know what I mean? Yeah. What position I, you playing? God, I'm playing in the nine at the every, minute. Every <laughs> I've played every. <laughs> the Georgie's over there saying exactly, what? George. Exactly. But, um, I, I normally I normally play. It's, it's weird, I, the start of my career, I played sort of in the 10, just behind the striker. Mm. And then the, the, <laughs> the, the, the older I've got. That, the funny thing is, mate, this is his older brother who knows him probably better than he knows himself. His best position is a sweeper. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's exactly. Do you know, it's do you know what? It, it, it led, it led no. me. It led so me what's he doing up, up there then? <laughs> what are you doing up there then? <laughs> He's lost. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? It led me in good stead for when I went and managed. Mm. I played a lot of positions over my career. I could do a job anywhere, really. Um, but for the start of my career, I sort of played in the 10, just beyond the strike. I was at Emple Town when I first started. Um, went to Cambridge, Wingate, I played right wing. Um, so I, play, I know it's, it's mad, really. And that, now I'm playing sort of in the nine. It's, it's been a bit, I'm not, I don't think I'm supposed to be playing in the nine. I think we've had a few injuries, so I've been doing a job. But I, I'm doing all right. And do you know, do you know what? I've just I've missed, you, there's such a, I can't explain to you how different the relationship you have with players as a manager than to a player. Yeah. And to come back into playing, and just being a part of that that, that group culture and that, mm. that banner, that separate chat, and because I, I was quite strict as a man. That separate I, chat. It, 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 it's, it's, it's important these days. It's important though. Mm. Don't care what anyone says. It's about team bonding, and that's where you bond as a group of players. And for me, last year, like I don't know how others set their out. They've got their own opinions and set. We was completely out of that mould. We, we stayed as a management group. You go and have your bit. You, can I swear on this? Yeah. <laughs> you go and have your bitches and your moans and stuff like that and groans and decisions that we do. But that's your that's your time. Yeah. That's your time. It's not my time. Yeah. And I, I, I just thought we, we was last year we was very organised in what we was do. We stayed professional throughout the year, and and do you know what? On the whole, if I look back at it, the, the day that I found out that we weren't going to be managers of half the town again, and the way it was done was incredibly dishonest. I was, I was going to actually ask that, like, yeah, I can. When you lot kept them up, yeah, was the natural thing in your mind to just stay on next season and then let me, push, let me jump, push let me jump in there quickly. Go on, be proud. Because I was there, obviously, initially at the start of the year. Yeah. Max obviously rang me when, when the thing came up with him and told me to go over there. Yeah. And I had my opinion on it. And my opinion was there was a lot of people behind the scenes there that you wouldn't really want to work with. Yeah. But what I said to him was, was he's on a hiding to nothing. I said, you go in there, you've got your remit to keep the club up. You go and do that. Then you've done your part, knowing that he's 29 years old. If the worst come to worst, which I never thought it would it'd be disrespected like he was, mm. He's 29 years old. He can just down tools, go and start playing again. You know, I think it would have affected other people that, you know, a lot further down their journey yeah. as a manager. It could have mm. they'd be out of work now, wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? But he had the he had the facilities to be able to go and to just start playing again. But a lot of people obviously have said you shouldn't have left St Margaretsbury because you knew your brother knew that what the kind of people were, were like over there. But you know, you take you take it at face value. At the end of the day, he was managing at Step Five, and he got offered a job at a Step Four club. And Hartford, as a as a football club, forget the people behind the scenes, are a, are a huge club for me. You know, mm. they get good crowds, 
they're you know they're set up to to probably kick on again if they had the right people involved. Yeah. So if that opportunity at 29 years old comes up to manage that club, you have to take it. For me, you know, with better people behind the scenes, it would have worked that differently. Mm. But it uh, didn't, uh, uh, and you live and you learn. But I think that that was my advice at the time. I said, you're on a high end to nothing. Go and do the remit, keep them up. But See then, what, what actually happened though? Like, so obviously he's he said what he said to you. Yeah, when yeah. you got in, did you get a sense of, oh my gosh, he's actually right. This is what's going on. As I said, I, do you know what? I didn't really, I didn't really, maybe a bit naive at times, but mm. I was so focused on my job and what I needed to do. And I had, I had to indulge and, and, and really get to grips with the players that were at Hartford. Mm. I had so much to do and we had such a big job to, to do. I didn't really get involved in that side. Yeah, I kind of tried to show them a little bit of respect. And you know what? I don't want to know the ins and outs of the football club. Mm. I don't want to know what's going on. I don't care what's going on, really. I'm here to do a job. Whatever I'm going to tell you I'm going to do, I'm going to do. And my players are going to do that behind me, and so is my management team. So I, t there, was, there were things that went on over, the, over a few weeks, like there was change rooms getting broken into and kits. I mean, we bought Colin Hay, who was, who was my kit man, second to none kit man. He made the decision to stay at Hartford. That's his choice. That, there's no, there's, no, there's no qualms about that, it's fine. But there was few things like, we, the, the amount of work we'd done when we were in there, that's ridiculous. I mean, it was an absolute pigsty. Mm. We cleaned everything. Like, these are things that players don't get. Yeah. And now that I get coming out of it, it's, 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 it just opens me up a little bit more. But we, we, we cleaned the place from head to toe. Mm. The kit man, we, the cuts, like little things, like cut socks and for players and stuff like that, like that should just be, just be off the, do you know what I mean? Just mm. things that are just ticking along all the time. They, everything, all the processes that, as a player, I knew that when I went into management, now that I'm a manager, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the players what I'd want as a player. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? So, we made sure that was done. So it weren't, I didn't really wanna get involved in all the ins and outs. I just wanted to do my job, keep the club up, keep the club in the league that it, it, it should, and it, the, the club, as Daryl says, should be in, mm. because of the nature of, <clears throat> the nature of the fan base that it can get, and it does get, um, and, and just, and yeah, so it was just do go and do your job, Max. See what happens at the end of the year. Unfortunately, the way it went on, it was it was so. Was it a face to face chair, thing? I mean, the the chairman didn't even say thank you for keeping us up. Thanks for your time here. It was literally as blunt as that. And I mean, Wade he got Tom, Tommy. Tommy's a passionate man like myself. He he's a club legend over there. Scored a lot of goals for the club. He's mm. got the club at heart, and he still probably does deep down. But the amount of disrespect they showed him more than me, because they don't know me for Madden really. I've played against their teams in the past, but they don't really. Mm. So the, the amount of disrespect they showed him, I thought was an outrage. And then for, for me, for Tommy, it probably took a bit of while to get over. But for me, the next day, I, I kid you not, it's no word of lie, it switched. I went, you know what? I don't need to be here. I don't need to be in a club where the mindsets of these people are like this. Mm. I don't want to work with people like this. But it's what I'm trying to say. That, yeah. And I don't want to just dwell on this, because... You're saying a lot about it without actually saying anything. Yeah, no, so, no, no, no. <laughs> but like, is it is it was it a thing of, you know, um, you guys had a conversation and you were thinking that we're going to have a conversation about what's going on next season, and it was more like, actually, thank you for your time, but we don't need you anymore. Well, I had to full, I had to full show your hand with a kind of that sort of other radio show. Yeah, because to, they was just sitting there. They was just sitting there. Well, Max and Tommy are trying to plan now. So we obviously they kept. We was planning while we was there. Yeah, so, kept like, the club up. So you're, going, you're going into the following season. Isn't yeah, you? so you we, so we like. said to the club that look, if we keep you up, um, we'll, we'll have it next year. And they basically said yes, basically. So you you do what you do, and then then we'll we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes, kind of thing. But if I look back on it, I might make like I don't know if you get things in writing at that level though, Dale. You don't really do. Yeah, it's all sort of hearsay and on, on, on mouth and stuff like that. Mm. But I thought from a personal point of view, look, let me go and do my job. If I keep them up, how could they get rid of yeah. this? But it was you know what I mean? time was ticking on, so you start looking at players for the new season. Yeah. yeah. Little, little things again that go unnoticed, just trying to organise your pre-season. You know, when you're going to start, we where, had, where are you going to train, who are you going to play? Yeah. And, and they just weren't, they weren't confirming the job at the end of the day. They, yeah, they said yes week, yeah. in, you know, back mm. when they took the job over, seven weeks out from the end of the season, yes. but they hadn't confirmed it. So someone rang Max up and said, you know, what, what's your plans for next year? Do you want to come and go on um, a radio station? I said, go and do it. I said, because you're going to tell them your plans, honestly, from the heart, you're doing nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to go out on air. And now if they've got no idea, if they're not going to keep you, yeah. then I have to tell you, because you've told, yeah. you've told half of the world, yeah. well, you know, yeah. half of the world, half of the world, the non-league game that this is your plans yeah and that's 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 what forced their hand in the end to tell yeah, them, it, it, tell it, them it the took truth, about a week and a bit and the longer it went on that i was just like what's going on here and then it sort of it kind of switched don't get me wrong you don't want to you don't want to believe it but mm. it kind of switched a little bit and 
it was disappointing. It was it was disappointing. But as I say, after after a day, it, um, after I, I, try, you know, I try I try not to talk about it too much and and go into depth too much. So I, I just really want to know what's that. happening because nobody ever talks about yeah, what it is. what it's it, almost the un, unspoken. Yeah, thing, it's, it's yeah, like, you know, know something's you know, gone on. I, I try I try and show as much respect as I can, and I try and I, I say to my players when they, when I'm, when they're playing for me, show as much class in, in whether you're losing, whether you're winning, show as much class as you can. Whatever's happened, they're in the wrong. It's as simple as that. Mm. So. What we've done over the season, whether it be at Mags and Hartford, we've gone in, we've done well at St Mags, we took them to the limit. A bit like Gav Kelsey when he got there, he took them to third, fourth. Unfortunately, because of the ground, they can't go up. So the, the project kind of finished with, with six, seven games to go. Was I going to keep hold of the players? I think my, my, my striker, Chancey Dash, got 40 goals. You had Scully that was playing well. You had Brad Robinson, the goalkeeper. Tommy Fletcher is a player that I brought back. I'm really happy. I mean, one of the, one of the best things for me as a manager last year was Tommy Fletcher had a really rough, rough road with... Uh, Coming back from sort of playing pro, coming back down, got a really nasty injury, which, which is a, a, another story for another day. But he come up to me after one game, and Max, thanks so much for getting me back playing. Mm. And to, for a player to say that to you, like it just, it meant the world to me. Do you know what I mean? Especially a player his caliber. Did you know? have any other players from when, from when um, your brother was there? Yeah, well, we, we sort of, you know, as you from around the same area, we mm. know a lot of the same players. So yeah. a lot of the players, yeah, that, that Max brought down to the club. Bar and some were players that we've worked with before. I've, uh, you know, a few of them played under Gav initially. Yeah. Brought them back. Um, Who was the, the skipper that? Didn't he, didn't he go back? Charles. Ollie, yeah, yeah Charles. Charles. Yeah, Oli. Oli went back. Charles, Phil, yeah. Phil Lowen. Yeah. Some good, good players. Yeah, mm. more than capable. Was Mac still there? Step four. Well, Mac went Wingate. Grace. Oh, Grace. Who, who went Wingate? Yeah. yeah. Who went Wingate? Ruffy. Oh, Ruffy. Ruffy. Oh, Ruffy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Is, it King, is it Kings Langley yeah. now, nah? Charles? Top King's player. Landing. Top player, yeah. King's Langley. Yeah, is that a real team? Who's your manager? Dean. Dean and. Uh, Mark, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Playing really well. Started the season really well. Yeah. Follow Charles. I've uh, I played with his older brother. Yeah. So me and a rough skill. Sammy Ruff. Have you two played together before? Yeah. You know yeah, did, yeah. Against and with. Yeah, against them with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah at times. Yeah. Do you know what? It's, it was good. Well, like, it's good. the thing is, there's an age gap of five years. Yeah. So like it was. When I was younger, when it? it was a box one B and E. Yeah, you matured a lot. Just to do my head in. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, to do my head in, like this is one of them in the warm ups, like not taking it seriously. I take it seriously. It was like we were shouting at each other all the time. But he's he's he's, uh, he's grown up a lot, and uh, like his enthusiasm probably outweighs mine. To be fair, mm. he commit so much time to it, so he'll he'll do really well. One day maybe we we'll work together. But and playing against each other, what, what was that like? It was in a nil-nil draw, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, it's funny Mark. enough, it was against Hartford as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was playing for Hartford and he was playing for Boxburn Borough. Yeah. And, uh, my old man loves it. He's got a picture in his office. Yeah. And, and, and the photo looks, looks well. okay as well. It looks like we're, we're like enjoying it and it, enjoying playing against each other. No, I love that. I was, just, I was just <laughs> trying to kick him. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to kick him. I couldn't get near him. Uh, <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. No, it's good, good times, good times. But has have your experience with Hartford put you guys off management at all? Not at all. You, you can't. You can't sort of dictate. You can't sort of see where they was ever going to come from. You know what I mean? I, I played for Hartford mm. when I was eighteen, and then I went back there for another spell. I spent a lot of time at that football club. Yeah. And I don't wish them like sort of any ill feeling. You know, I mean, the club as a whole. I want. I want to do well because there's people down there. Um, Dion Debbie's uh, people that I've known for a long time. They've looked after me. They haven't grow up. Mm. And that, that sounds like. A, Big statement to make, but that's how long I've been down there. Mm. Uh, it's just, it's just unfortunate they got some some people within the the committee within the club that just have, just are not good football people, and you can't you can't like legis legislate for that. So I don't. It's not put us off doing. I loved the two years I was there. I was I was bantering him. I said, listen, at the end of the day, I said I helped get the club back up to step four, and I said and he kept them at step four. So we've done all right. We can walk away. If I if the people behind the scenes left though, and said they said, look, you guys come back in, would you do it? D depending on depending on as Daryl says who yeah. was there and what it's not as I said I got over it very quickly but if if there were certain people there then then, then no yeah then, then no as simple as that and sometimes I think like Daryl says like do you know what generally as a club and you know, some of the fans are fantastic down there actually, mm -hmm. amazing and they've amazing. put a lot of work down there like Brian, the Brian Jennings and people like that like yeah, yeah. they're really nice people and they want the club to do well and they probably they probably disregard it and they they, they don't like what happened but at the same time it's their football club. Yeah. And they're fans of the football club, so some great memories there. George would say the same. You know, we, we had some good FA Cup days down there, and yet there are, there's nothing like scoring a goal down the stable end mm. with 40, 50 of them boys behind the goal, 
I was, I was in the technical area. I wanted to run over and jump yeah. in there myself. Do you know what I mean? I had, to, I had to rein it in a little bit. But there's some good people there. But unfortunately, committee-wise, I don't know what, I don't know so, what the score is there so, now, but there's some, there's some dodgy people there. So, well. so, sometimes, the, the way I've sort of learned throughout the years, sometimes you've got to take a step back and let nature take its course a little bit. Mm. If they do well, they do well. If they do bad, they do bad. It's as simple as that. Like, we, I mean, we won't be, we won't be checking out for results and stuff nah, like that. It's, nah. But the, new, but the so. new manager, he's, he's someone that played with a good friend of mine at St Albans, and, and he's a young manager. And as he being a young manager, I wish him nothing but the best. You know what I mean? He's coming out of playing um, for St Albans, I imagine, and he's now a, a young manager. So I yeah. wish him, I wish yeah, him, I wish he, him all he, the best. He probably faces yeah. the same obstacles I did when I first started. So, and I, I never met the guy and stuff like that. And do you know what? Good, good luck to him. Do you still look at yourself as a manager though? Because now that you've gone back to to playing, do you know what I said to myself? I mean, I got. My manager now, Kev Christou, um, you've got Stuart Stedman down there, a few others. I said to myself, after they offered me something, I said, do you know what, I can't, I, I can't judge on what he's like because everyone's different. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've, 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 I've done that and I've said to myself, if I don't think that's done correctly, I can't really comment. I'm yeah. just going to get on with playing and just, just, just relax really and just enjoy my football. What are your like, um, goals for this season? Um, personally or as a team? or? Personally and as a team. Yeah, just, just, just as a team, I think that there's, I mean, I think promotion is, is, is something that's been shouted about. Mm. Um, whether that's achievable, I, I mean, if, if you're, if that's what the chairman and the manager wants to go for and you think you've got a, a squad that's capable of doing so, you have to believe it first. Yeah. Um, my, my football head says we've been together not very long, but at the same time, there's a very, very good squad there. Mm. Very, very good squad there. I mean, I've, I've played in squads and stuff like it's young, it's fresh, it's so it's just about getting together as quickly as possible yeah. and putting points on the board. I think we've, we've played four, lost two, drew two, uh, played played four, lost two, won two, um, and it's the start of the season. You know what it's like after 10, 15 games, it then starts to fathom himself out. Um, but promotions on the cards, that's what they want. It's and a tough uh, league to get out of as well because there's no it's, playoffs. Yeah, step step five. five is though. It's got, it's one, one team got to win it. Up, it? Yeah. You have to win the league. So Who's so favourites in your league? In our league, it's, do you know what? It's probably probably, you probably us, yeah. Colney, um, ours. We have had a good start. I don't really know much about them, but the, the, as Dow said earlier, the leagues have changed a lot. Mm. The teams mm. have changed a lot, so it's hard to really to, to gather any information on it. But I mean, yeah, I think we're, we're supposed to be up there. Yeah, if people would tout it, and then you've got Colney. Yeah. Um, that, that's yeah. I, as I said, I don't really I know. Think when we was at Hartford in that league, we was the first team to go up in second place. People made a joke out of it, but we didn't actually win the league. But London Colney did. Yeah. We I think we lost it by a point. But uh, what's it? Is it like their stadium or something? Yeah, that's it. yeah. They didn't get the groundworks done on time. Um, they had a good side. All their players now play for Colney Heath, which is what you're saying. Will be a contender mm. in that league. They're a good, good side. Um, but we went up because Hartford's ground, as I say, mm. is streets ahead for that league. And um, yeah, we went up as a second place team because the first team couldn't go. Up, the first place team couldn't go up. So yeah, you're you're getting married in five five weeks. You said. I am. How soon after that do you reckon I'm okay, I'm back already? Uh, it sort it of depends. I mean, last year, end of last year, as I say, because I, I wasn't involved with the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday running mm. the club, being yeah. involved in the coaching staff, I started playing uh, for a friend's Saturday side, so I played for Wormley. Um, so I'm going to do that again this year, but it all depends on what becomes available. Mm. So I mean, obviously, Max is back playing now under a, under a, under a staff, so I probably wouldn't get involved over there. Um, as I have only ever worked for one for one management team I'm with Gav, um, Phil, and Ray. So they're obviously not doing anything at the moment. Mm. Um, so yeah, it just depends depends what comes up. Football's uh, how quick things change yeah. in football. Is when, it? when I come back in six weeks after the wedding, yeah, uh, new things could could arise. So, but I, yeah, I'd hundred percent. Would you say it's it's hard to kind of really get your foot in the door with with non league management? Obviously, you're a coach. Do you actually want to go into the actual management side of things? Or do you want to stay a coach? I mean, the reason the reason probably I wouldn't go into management not at this exact moment is is because I can't with work. Yeah. I'm not there enough. You know, as I say, I have to miss the odd Saturday. I have to, you know, Tuesday, Thursday sometimes from away. I'm, I'm not there at all, and I don't think if you're a manager of a football club, yeah, you should be able to do that. You know, so Max Max can dedicate a lot more time of it, which is obviously why he went into it, and I sort of stayed on the coaching. <laughs> it's basically saying you don't do anything, mate. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's not a bit. It's not a bit. It's not a bit. You know, he's got more normal hours. Than you know what? You say that though. I, I, I choose to. Do you know what I mean? I choose uh, to because it, it's something that lies lies passionately, passionately within me, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I choose to do that. You've got to make a conscious decision sometimes of, of what you want you to do, but it's, it's strain. Like last year, my job situation was a bit different to your mm. job situation. 
like it does come into account like now I've got a, 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 what I'd say is a proper full time job and enjoying work and yes I, I mean I'm a salesman by trade so I'm out on the road all the time but at the same time I've got to do the job and pay the bills so yeah. it, it is hard and you've got to dedicate people don't realise and players don't realise and this is what I'm trying to put out to certain players in my team now you don't really know what goes on behind closed doors and how much work if you want to do well at SAG and you want to do well at the management game mm -hmm. you have to put the work in whether that be networking with players whether it be your team identity you don't get a lot of time to work on your, your set up and how you're setting out your strategies a, a lot of the stuff that I did last year was very game specific so I do a lot of research on other teams and fill in gaps where I think we could affect their game mm -hmm. um, and I was a bit hands on last last year with, with the management side I took a lot of coaching sessions and not that I didn't, I didn't allow my coaches to, to do what they want to do, they, they supported in that way, but I was very, very hands-on. And I think going into my next management job, if something comes up, I would probably get someone in that was very technical, was, a, was on a really good wavelength, and, and just sort of, so, sort of the way my team identity went, just to make sure they, 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 they sort of brought out on the training field. But it's difficult, because that's step five. I mean, the availability sometimes. Is I, was, I was going to ask, so, how do you guys look at players who, you know, you've got your team set out for whichever day you're planning and everything, and then a player turns up and says, or not turns up, but you get the call, I can't come because of work. Like, what does that do? Do you kind of look at him and think you're not committed? Or do you actually understand that, listen, he's got bills to be paying? Do you know what? Look, life gets in the way sometimes. I think if I was paying the guy 200 quid a week, 300 quid a week, then it's a bit different. But when you're paying expenses, especially at step five side, you have to realise from the get go, that it's step five. Yeah. Like that these things do happen. It's as simple as that. So you just need to be, I mean, one of the things that I ask my players is to be acceptable to change. So if I'm not acceptable to change, how can my player be? Do you know what I mean? So you, you have to you have to go around it sometimes. And it's, it's don't get me wrong, it's not ideal. And one of the things that I do ask the players when I was managing was, was, was the commitment levels. And I think you have to get, what Daryl says about sort of players around the catchment area, if you get that, You've then got some kind of like a not a group of friends of people that are, are, like like to be around each other, mm -hmm. and I think you get twenty well fifty well ten fifteen points a season from actually being together. So I was massively on that last year. I mean, we used to get to the club at half twelve and have the odd, odd quiz and stuff like that, and half six in the bar, and we used to we done like beach football like like a pre season mm -hmm. just to get that group together because it's such a massive thing for me. Is that togetherness gets you points and gets you over the line with fifteen minutes to go? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So um, yeah, yeah. Tough one. That's what you say. It's 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 one of them. You know, sort of. If you, we've come out of the games and we've played a lot of football, a lot of years. I've, you know, played non-league football since I was seventeen. I'm thirty-four now. So sometimes you just know when, I'm, when someone's telling a little porky pie. Mm. Some, yeah, exactly. Sometimes you know you, you might have set something out and it does. It is annoying. It probably completely throws your training mm. into into disarray. You know, you're setting out to play. You know, work on how to affect the game in wide areas, and one of your wide men works out. You yeah. know, he's going to play on on Saturday, rings you up and he says, I can't get there tonight. For me personally, I'd like to think I've got a good enough relationship where I'd know straight away, I'd be like, listen, he's telling the truth. So you just, you know, quickly you just have to try and alter what you do in the session. So but does it like have an effect on, you know what, you weren't there this week, Saturday you're bombed? Yeah, or start, listen, sometimes, it, I think if it becomes a regular thing, then, then you have to start, yeah. you have to put your foot down. You can't be taking the mickey out of, but, as I get, I've, I've, I think, as I say, the short space of time I've been doing it, I think I've got a good enough relationship with these guys. Because I'll call them out on the phone. I'll say, listen, are you pulling money? And, and I've had them before say, look, I just can't get there. I'm struggling. Or, listen, work's, work's tough. And he's honest enough to tell me. And I'll, you just got to make a decision on that, haven't you? You know what I mean? It's, it's tough. Yeah. I think there's not many things that we ain't done. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> as players, when we were a bit younger, do you know what I mean? So you know where, and where, where we've kind of got that age gap relationship where we're kind of similar ages. We know when someone's pulling, pulling up or or not, we, we can kind of find that out a little bit. And it's so not, if it's not a reoccurrence, mm. then it's okay. And sometimes, it depends on the opposition that you're playing against. If you're playing against a top, top team and you know that player, if he's pulled out or whatever, he's going to affect that game, then you play him. Because mm. yeah. it's going to benefit the team, it's going to benefit you. Just that if fine line though, as I say, yeah. because before it becomes a disrespect to the rest of the team. Yeah. yeah. Once, once the rest of the players are like, Kind of put, they're pulling one over the coaching staff so as soon as that happens then you've sort of lost a little bit of respect from the boys and you don't want that so yeah. it's a fine line and then fine there's, fine a, there's ways of banter and, and making him feel that way as well do you know what I mean as yeah. well so he doesn't do it again uh, do you know what I mean so my next question is I've always kind of wondered I never, I never asked this <laughs> yeah, 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 question no no no, no. It's, it's, it's actually not even it's actually not even a, a great question to go be on, fair but as coaches and managers 
how do you deal with that, the opposing teams during matches when it gets a bit like argy vargy and, and whatever? Do, do you can't take this one because he's, uh, he's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> he's a hell of a lot better than me, yeah. I, um, I was a confrontational player, so I've, I do, I've calmed down a lot. But uh, I, I sort of, I try and get ahead of it now. I, and I do, I'm, I'm an interactor from the sideline as well. Mm. So if I'm standing in the, in the, in the technical box and there's a right winger who we know is half tasty yeah. you can get into him do you know what I mean when his touch when his touch isn't there and he's, he steps over the ball and it goes out you just like you know in his ear like oh, man, I thought he was half decent like, you know what I mean and you sort of sometimes you're one up but then they give it back to you you know when, when they go one nil up and they come right over to but what game. about with, with other coaching coaching stuff and um, does it ever get into a yeah, bit of a yeah you have a few run-ins you have a few run-ins there's a few teams you know when there's there's a little bit of Needle about the game, it does over. It spills over sometimes. There's been a few tunnel incidents, uh, but that's part of football. It's part of football until it's listen. Nothing, nothing I've been involved in has ever come to blows or anything like that. Mm. Most of the time, it's just you just you brilliant them. It's fun. Do you ever get that the, the the teams where you, before the match you know that oh, yeah, their 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 staff are a bit, a bit you know <laughs> it's, it's, a bit it's yeah, yeah we have to we have to be up for this one, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's one live at Hartford. It was funny. We when we when we went up from step five, the, our benches were initially on the stand side, and they were okay. they were literally like two managers was was me to you, sort yeah, of two meters away. Mm. So that was that was probably a little bit too. I felt that was almost unfair, you know, mm. because even if you wanted to say something under your breath, it get heard from the next box. You know what I mean? Did you so, not find Did you not find that situation sometimes to be difficult? Because as a like you've got three or four on that side, and you've got another two on the other side, and it could be information coming from both sides that don't actually tie up or match up like do you find it hard what from our staff yeah yeah i know you've got phones and stuff like yeah, that yeah sometimes, sometimes it happens yeah someone's no, no one's gonna six people is very rarely gonna get everyone who's got the same opinion yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah but you just any differences you sort of, at the end of the day at the end of the day, gavin's just gonna say i don't care what you lot want to do i'm gonna do what i want to do you know what I mean? yeah. at the end of the day he's the manager so that's that's sort of the the, the end call but uh yeah at Hartford, it, we ended up moving the, the dugouts to the other side of the pitch Fair and separating apart. them by yeah. about 25 meters <laughs> i don't know if it has to do with yeah feel love <laughs> shouting yeah, possibly <laughs> you could hear him in where but uh yeah no nah, it's, it's good but most of the time it's good banner yeah what are your coaching styles so who do you kind of look up to in terms of coaching and and, and Eddie, who? Eddie Mack. Eddie Mack, the Mack. I just want to be Eddie Mack. <laughs> Eddie McLaughlin, he's been on here before. He's a big yeah. He's been with, uh, with Lee Allenson now. He's, he's a legend for me. I think he's, there's someone that's really going somewhere in the game. It's Eddie. Uh, mm. he's, he, similar to me, he wants to play in the right way, first of all, but he knows how to adapt. He's young. He's relatable from, from the boys, which is very, very important. But he also knows when to, right, we're not pals now. You're going to do it mm. my way. It seems like he studied it. Like, oh, he's, like, he's, he's fantastic. I can't yeah. talk highly enough of him. I learned a lot off, off of him in 18 months. Mm. I was working with him. But, um, no, I respect that. Yeah, no, I do. You, you do. You work with someone. He was there week in, week out. We used to we used to train up at, um, at Hatfield, wasn't it? What was it called? Yeah. Mm. Kind of some leisure centre. Yeah. And it was it was an ideal. It was a small eight side pitch. Mm. You know, not even, the, not this is being really fussy now, but not the new 4G. It was the old hard after turf. It was an ideal. But he would somehow put on a, a sort of session that you'd sort of walk away going, I didn't think we'd be able to get that out of yeah. the conditions we were in. Um, so he, yeah, he, he'll go from he'll go from strength to strength for me. He, he'll, he'll really kick on. So for me, yeah, Eddie, Eddie's top man. How about you? What, what was your kind of style? Was it just Co coaching style? I mean, like, what do you mean in sense of coaching? What, what, what I would like? What, 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 yeah, what do you look for in your in your teams? Like, how do you set them up? And we, we like to play. I mean, I mean certain levels are different um, mm. where I played sort of step five step four step three I've seen the barriers in between each so but on the whole we like to play I mean I think I'd say defend from the front attack from the back a little bit in a sense so like my goalkeeper would have, always have to be good mm. my two full backs would always be nice and high and wide my two centre halves would split my centre, my, my centre midfielder would come and pivot if it was on and we try and be as brave as possible I, I, I like forward passes getting into, depending on personnel I mean we had a Six foot four, six foot five striker in Chansey that that bagged goals, mm. goals. So, not playing into him would be a disservice to the team. Yeah. So we we had the we had the capabilities and the players to play that way. That wasn't direct. It mm. was just forward thinking. So we we we'd always be we'd always be very very quick in our passing. 
Um, to say there was a, I mean, we, we went on a couple of shapes really last year. We went on a 4 1 3 2, which helped out really well. And we, we brought that over to Hartford. And you know what? Not a lot of teams knew how to deal with it. Mm. Um, I wouldn't just, I mean, we had our team identity, and that, that's yeah. our team identity. And it was that. And we worked on it like solely for a long time. And the players bought into it, which was most pleasing for me. But, I, and again, as I say, like, we, we was quite game specific. So I'd do a lot of research. I watched tape. That George, like I'll, I'll watch people's highlights. Mm. I'll go to games. I'll network and find out how they play. I mean, I used to have a. Well, I had a good relationship with Maxi last year. He'd play a team that was in the same league, and he'd let us know a bit. And like, do you know what I mean? I'd let him know a bit and stuff like that. So, it's the work that you put in to find out how you can affect that team and how you can beat that 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 team. But I mean, coach, like, I mean, coaches wise, I mean, Omar, Omar Rizar, he was when I was at Cheshire, he was he was brilliant. Like some of the sessions that he put on, fantastic. I think he's doing really well down at Watford at the minute. Mm. I ring Riz on every every now and then just ask for a bit of guidance. I mean, the the guys played pro and was at Arsenal and he's um and for someone, do you know what? Sometimes I find it hard because like someone of that stature that, that's played the game at that level, mm -hmm. they don't give anything back. Yeah, in a sense, or I I think people find it hard to go and talk to that person or ask them for a bit of advice because they probably think, oh, what are we doing? But Riz is he, he's really approachable. He always pick up the phone to me. Do you know what I mean? Or and, and have a chat and so some of his sessions when I was at Chesham they, they were non-stop the intensity in the session yeah and there's something that I loved is, is intensity in training and in games is just being bang up for it do you know what I mean and, and Rizzo was good and then I, when I, I done that Adidas thing didn't I when I was like 21 I trained with Liverpool first team for a session yeah and it was amazing and like there was a Spanish coach down there and we trained I actually trained with the first team mm. and that was an experience I'll take away with me to the day I died do you know what I mean it was just I mean I was playing with Suarez and Bellamy and people like that only for about 20 minutes half an hour don't get me wrong but it was just an amazing at 21 it was like yeah. what am I doing here do you know what I mean what do you prefer um, playing or managing it's a good oh, question that yeah, it's a really question. good question you'll struggle not, to answer that yeah do you know what I, I, I'm leaning towards managing but, yeah. is um, that because you've done the playing and it's like you're ready for a new challenge not necessarily no because I love playing as well man it's, it's yeah. really hard like and I'm still capable. Where I'm 29, I'm getting slower. Don't get me wrong. Um, I can still put the ball in the back of the net. I can still. Can I'm, he? Still, I'm, I'm still a character in a changing room. Is it? Is it? He bags. He's, no, he's a good player, man. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Good technique. Cool, 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 cool. It's hard for me to say, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I am getting slower. Do you know what I mean? And I, 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 I like the whole. Do you know what? I'll be honest. I'm busy. I'm. Mm. I'm. I'm. And I'm. I'm. I'm ha if I had 11 busy players on a Saturday. Mm. I'd, I'd halfway be on to a winning side. It's good to be, for me, I'm so proud in saying that, it's good to be busy. If it's something you care about, you do the show for a reason. You're passionate about it. So I do non league for a reason. No, I'm passionate about George it. George won't let me give it up. It's all great. I've tried. I'm passionate about it. Non league's been with me for the last 12 years. I've met some fantastic people throughout. I've had what I'd say is a really good career in the sense of I've played a few at the decent levels. I probably held myself back by not sticking out at a few clubs. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for me, I'm passionate about it. So I, I like all the ins and outs. I like the, 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 the process of my head thinking, how am I going to defeat this team Saturday? What side am I going to pick? There were so many different things to think about and, 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 and come over. Mm -hmm. and so many obstacles to come over in that week. That thought process was just fantastic. Like it was, I, I just enjoyed the whole process. I think I think it depends on what sort of kind of player you was as well. So we was quite similar. I, when I used to play, I was to try and I was so so worried about what everyone else was doing. Do you know what mm. I mean? I wanted the team to do so well as a player that you know, sort of, if, if someone else weren't doing a job, I'd be like, oh, look, come on, you got to do this. So you, we was already sort of managing within a side. But mm. and then the flip side is a lot of the best players I played with were individual players. It's crazy to look at it, you know, sort of like I played with a couple of wingers and they were solely, it was about them. Mm. And they ended up being amazing for the team because of how good they were individually. Yeah. But you know, these guys, it's sort of a makeup in your head, I think. But these guys, I could never ever in a million years see them going into coaching or management because they had a job to do. They went out, they did it. Most of the time they were match winners. Yeah. But me personally, when I played, I was like, you know, we need to be make sure that, you know, if the left back's rubbish, we need to make sure we're getting the ball over there. So I'll make sure the right back's doing it. So you sort of almost manage him within your playing style. So yeah. I think that's why people do move into to the coaching side of it and the, and the management side. And he was quite similar. But it's, 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 it's non league football, it's so interesting. Like these two wingers, one of them, my mate Scotty Nielsen, he was he played at Hartford, moved on to Ware, went Cambridge City, Bradford, uh, Crawley, got Crawley promoted from 
uh, League Two to League One, mm. but he was an individual and yeah. he was unbelievable to watch. But not in a million years would I ever imagine him going into a coaching or manager. Yeah. Like, I almost don't think he cared what happened in the rest of the pitch, as long as he was hurting people on the right hand side, doing which he did every week. Yeah, and then he made my life like a hell of a lot easier because I'm mm. like, I'll get the ball out to him and he can he can win you the game. Yeah. Mm. Such an interesting thing, I think, to sort of how you was on the pitch as a player does sort of relate into how you move on after after the players. I have so, I no interest in ever coaching, really? ever managing none. Why though? Just, I just don't care. Yeah, honestly, it's just I, I, I can't imagine having to to sit there and plan stuff and and yeah. whatever. Like I can talk about football all day long, yeah, yeah, but yeah. to to go and try and because I'm rubbish myself. <laughs> do, 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 <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? No, no, no I, I, I can play. I can play, I but it's play. it's just I'm, I'm, I just have no interest yeah, whatsoever, yeah. man. Some people don't. Mate, it's yeah, my, it's yeah. my hope. Like, None. As I said, I still don't. I'm not sure why I'm getting married in five weeks because the last two summers before I dropped it off. Phone all the time. I swear she thinks I was cheating on her, mate. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm running upstairs because I'm trying to get a player over. Yeah. Gav, yeah, Gav me and Gav on the phone. Are we going to do? Yeah, it? that's, that's too much hassle. All through the summer. It's, yeah, that's going to be a break. It's non-stop. If yeah. You don't get you don't get the break. If you're, yeah, if you're yeah, to you do don't. well and plan and, and recruit properly and and stuff like out of season, out of respect, like it's 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 mad. Like mm. it's actually mad. Mm. It, but it, you get out what you put in at the same time, like. You get out what you put in. Yeah. yeah, it is mental. Like you don't realize the emails constantly from committees and chairmen and match day programs, and you don't even pick, players don't realize what it is. Yeah, and it's like I can't wait for this season really, just because it's like I'm just it's, I'm just very open about it. Like, yeah, I see things when they're going to happen and and whatnot. But yeah, it is mad. The amount of work that goes in is crazy. Uh cool. Well, very quickly before we round up, normally we do do um that your combined team of the week but when it's managers that we got on we normally just do who your top three coaches <laughs> but now because it's like a, a mixer of both yeah. i'm just going to include everything so wait but the first question is first is there low e in non-league football number one is there i think with certain individuals there is i mean i grew up with managers like terry spillane who, who, who runs his who runs his football club on respect mm. so th there is but going at like looking at what happened last year it, it remains to be. Yeah, I'd, I'd say on yeah. a whole no, no, there isn't. Mm. I'd like to say on a whole no, there isn't. Yeah. But you, you, you'll have certain players that you can rely on. So there is, yeah. it's still in there. Yeah. But as a whole, so I'd, I'd say no. Okay. It's up to you to recruit them players that yeah. are loyal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and that will stick together and, and have the right backing. I mean, I'd, I'd like budgets and stuff like that, like to, for a chairman to support you fully, mm. and um, which, which is interesting. Ah, right, cool. And your top three managers ever in the world. Not right. just non-league, just ever. Three managers. Right, I'd say Arsene Wenger. Love that. 100%. Changed the game. Mm. Changed the Premier League. The way the football is now, I think, is a lot to do with Arsene Wenger. I'm massively biased Arsenal fan, obviously, but I think most people, even away from Arsenal, would agree with that. So, yeah, I'd say it's Arsene Wenger. He's total class. Yeah. Just class all round. When I think chips were down and stuff like that, people like him, like, just mental. Yeah, go on. Who you got? got to be pep in it like some of the stuff I've watched his program and just just watched the way his teams play with so much freedom it's just mm. a joke do you know what I mean and you listen to his team talks he's like he ain't even got a board but he's just number one Edison number two like it's just all about energy and, and growth you can see that from from the outset yeah like for me he's just like his, his record speaks for itself and it's just the way his team plays like it's just so vibrant and Quick, oh, you can't help but love the, like, the intensity of someone who clips you in front of him. You know what I mean? What was the one the other day with uh, Sterling with the dinky dinky thing? Do you watch that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a video, right? There's a video, they're doing this little uh, sort of rondo thing, 4v4 or 8v8, and uh, Sterling gets the ball. No, well, I think Ster one of Sterling's, I think it might have been Bernardo Silva got the ball, and like there's, he has to get it into the next zone to mm. complete a pass. And uh, Sterling's gone, oh, dink it, dink it. And uh, Guardiola's like, he's like, what is this terminology? And he goes, well, Raheem, what did you say? And he goes, dinky, dinky. <laughs> <laughs> so every time he's trying to get the ball from one end to the other, Guardiola's like, but I just felt like, you know, just uh, how close they are. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It become a banter the, thing. The guy's it, infectious though, isn't he? Mate, mm. watch the clip. Just listen to him. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, he's, yeah. He's, he's a top manager. Okay. Yeah. Very quickly, because I know as brothers, you guys will argue, probably argue <laughs> about this, this one. Coming. Your combined 11, World Star 11. So all, star, all Star 11, sorry. Yeah. Your combined. What? Of all time? Of all time. 11, wow. Wow. So it could be past and present players. Yeah. So, 
start with goalkeeper. In the sticks. What what formation are you like doing first? I think let's go current, innit? Let's go let's go with a four three three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In yeah. in goal. Yeah. In goal, I would say I don't think I've ever seen a better goalkeeper than Piers Michael. He was unbelievable. Depends what generation you look at it. Yeah. Like for for me now, the game's I'd say, changed. I'd, yeah, say, I'd say Edison just for the ability on the, on the, on it. The, the we got to agree on this because you're gonna get none of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely have to. You definitely have to agree, agree with this. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with yours because the game has evolved and what Edison can do is with his feet and that. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a different level now. Isn't it? Okay. We'll go Edison. Yeah. Edison, left back. Uh, left back, left back, left back. I'm gonna go Roberto Carlos. Yeah. Oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who are you gonna go with? I'd, I'd probably go for his consistency, Ashley Cole. But yeah. But Carlos was a he was a freak of nature in a sense. Like that bit, of, I like that bit of different. Remember that goal from near the corner flag? I'd, I'd go yeah. with Carlos. I saw that yesterday. Yeah. Funny enough, yeah. I saw I saw it online yesterday. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, just I've been there again as Arsenal fans. Like he was just a different generation. <laughs> like, but he was though. He, he, he was, was just to put true. Harry Kane there. Look at yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. never, never. That like, is like, going the right way, George. I'll give you that. But Henri, yeah. but there's, there's top quality out there and has been and, and current as well. Though, just, yeah, Andy like, Carroll. They've, got, they've all got. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Francis <laughs> Jeffers. <laughs> <laughs> how can you not, how can you not be in the team? So we're, we're going. In, yeah. in, are we going with Henri up top? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, so we'll Henry, yeah. in goal, we've got Schmeichel. Yeah. Left back, no, Roberto. Edison, oh, Edison. Yeah, yeah. Left back, Carlos. Carlos. Right back, yeah, Dani Alves. Alves. Yeah. Puyo and Adams. Zidane, Vieira, Iniesta, Ronaldo, yeah. Messi, and Henri. Ain't a bad side. Nice. No, de- right decent side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Don't know. Maybe. <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, no, guys, thank you very much for coming on. Hope you lot have enjoyed it. Oh, uh, mate, love yeah, it. If you haven't, it's yeah. still going out. <laughs> so it's still going out, even if even if you haven't enjoyed it. So um, yeah, um, guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, uh, comments, all of that good stuff, and um, we will be back next week. See ya.